What's going on guys? I'll be with I'll be Fitness Gaming and you've seen the title of the video, you know why you're here. No! Oh, God! Green White Taxes! We're back at it again. So today we're playing against what I think is Mono Red Prison, um, Dragon Stompy, couple cards I saw that make me believe that. I try to kind of look up the cards and combinations and see if I can find this deck. I'm assuming it's a brew. I've never really played against this deck in Modern. I've seen decks similar to this in Legacy. But let's jump into the game. If you guys happen to know what this deck is actually called, comment at the bottom. Let me know. Let me know. Um, so here we are with our starting opener here. We have our Thalia, Guardian of Thraven. We have these Skyclave, Stoneforge Mystic, Kuzali Pride Mage, and two Fetch Lands. Pretty good opening hand here for us. Unfortunately, our opponent moves to five. Um, at this point, you know, usually in the training uh, for for tournament training in MTGO, usually when people motor like five or four, they usually concede or they'll play a little bit just to kind of see what you're playing and then they concede. So... I'm thinking that's what they're going to do, right? I just think, oh, they might just concede, or they might just play it out. Um, I, I I, normally, if I have to mold five, I'll, I play things out because it's whatever, man. I'm just here to pr get practicing. But I know some people, they, like, rage quit and, like, retire from Magic all together and then make a hateful video. But opponent plays a mountain. So at this point, I'm like, all right, they mold to four, I mean to five, they played a basic mountain. Um, it could be burn, I'm thinking right now. It could be pretty much just the only deck I could think of. And then they play Cavern of Souls. And then this is when I'm like, huh, what is this? What is this? Cavern of Souls with a uh, uh, mountain? And then there it is, folks. They choose Dragon. So now I'm like, okay. And then I see Dragon's Claw. Oh my god, there's some type of stompy deck they probably play things like chalice uh other red cards that can cheat things in that one red god i forgot his name populus or something like that so that's what i'm thinking right now so i already know okay folly is going to be good against this matchup um because they do play a decent amount of spells and we also have some answers for these style of decks in our sideboard so we should be good enough to go here. So now that I play with Thalia and I know, okay, opponent mode 5, chances are they're going to probably be either low on land or low on actual cards to play, right? So Thalia, regardless of what's going on, is really good right now. Um, I have Stoneforge Mystic and we have the Skyclave. We don't need to play the Skyclave on the Dragon's Claw. That's not really doing anything right now. Right now, since we are ahead... We just want to close out the game. Because, like I always mention in all my videos, when you're playing Death and Taxes, you play your taxing pieces, one or two, and you protect them until you get ahead. Once you, you get ahead of them, you have to close out the game. So that's why, right now, I just want to close out the game because, for me, I feel like, okay, we're ahead. Um, it's going to take them a couple turns to kind of catch up to us. So let's go ahead and drop these exalted creatures and just get in with as much damage as possible. Eventually we could windmill slam the Stoneforge Mystic and grab the Skyclave Sword. That way we can instantly just equip it to the Thalia and continue this. If they happen to lightning bolt our Thalia here, we have a backup one. So we're in really good shape right now. If they play any threat, um, we can just Skyclave it. So... You know, again, we have answers, but that doesn't mean we want to just sit back, relax, play Stoneforge, grab Batter, Skull, have a couple brewskis, and, you know, try to be fancy. No, nah, man, you stick to the plan. Death and taxes. Tax them, and then you kill them. So there it is. Uh, three exalted triggers here. I can't imagine, at this point, I cannot imagine that the opponent um, feels they're going to win the game. I think they're just playing at this point to kind of see what we're playing so they can uh, sideboard correctly against us. Um, I do think we're very, very far ahead right now. Uh, they missed two land. I mean, they multiplied. They missed two land drops. 
they play more spells uh, than creatures. They're not a creature deck. And we have a Thalia. And now we have a decent amount of threats. So I grabbed the Sword of Fire and Ice here over the Skyclave. I usually like to grab the Skyclave to speed up the process. But because we drew a land and now we have the two nobles, I said, you know what, let's just get the sword because we can actually close the game a lot faster with that. We don't need to play any more creatures onto the battlefield. So now I'm thinking, okay, um, Stoneforge Mystic is, as you saw in that game, um, it's not bad, but it's pretty slow. And our game plan here is to disrupt them and then kill them as fast as possible. They're not... I don't think these mono red prison decks are real grindy. They're they're just trying to like do something really big and just end the game. So we have to slow them down from doing that. Um, I choose to go with two Gadog Teagues. We did see an artifacts with the Dragon's Claw, so we put in the extra Knight of Autumn. Also, we can gain life. They are a red deck. But I went with the two Gadog Teagues. Because I know it stops the God card for sure. And I know these Stompy decks normally play that card. Also, um, if this is one of those decks that's going to try to do something really big to just end the game, Gadog Teague is going to be really good in this matchup. But again, I'm not 100% sure what they're playing. But, you know, this is the fun part about playing these type of decks. You kind of get to see all these different decks in Modern. And you can start assuming, well, I think they would play this, so I'm going to play that. And, you know, you go back and forth with that, but that's how you learn. So, we have a good hand here. Um, the Sword of Fire and Ice is not bad. Probably one of the better equipments, I think, in this matchup. So, of course, we're going to lead with the Noble High Arc. And then, depending on what they play here, we may go with either a Giver of Ruins or a Pride Mage. Or we may just go with the Skyclave. It all depends on what they play here. If it's another Dragon's Claw, we're not going to worry about Dragon's Claw. It doesn't really do anything um, against us currently. So we can just let that uh, slide. So now they play a Warren Instigator. So here, I'm like, all right, Warren Instigator, it's a goblin card, right? When it hits you, it has double strike, and it could put any goblin. It could put two goblins into play. So you obviously, we obviously don't want to be hit by that, right? We don't want to ramp them. So yeah, we definitely, this is worth using the Skyclave for. And, you know, this is just to show how good this card really is. Like, look at the tempo swing that we have right here, right? Like, we're... We're not only slowing down their process of them uh, getting ahead with their deck and getting to the level that they're trying to run their deck at, but we are also progressing our board, putting more creatures into play, and you know, eventually be able to attack them with chip damage so that we can end the game. So now I'm just thinking, okay, they could have Anger of the Gods. Um, that could be a problem, but they don't. They pillage us. I'm like, all right, that's not too bad. We can play Gadog Teague next, or we can play Pride Mage and get in for four. So we have options. Uh, we draw a Gorse Quarter, which is not bad. Um, a land is good right now. We would prefer like a Fetch Land. But one option that I did think about right here is like playing either the Gadog Teague, but I was like, eh, let's, let's hold off on the Gadog Teague. Let's try to, try to increase um, our kill rate, right? So we want some extra damage. So we go for four damage here. With the double exalted creatures, I, I was thinking about ghost courting my forest to get a planes to, to, so I can hurry up and get this Giver of Ruins online. That way the Giver of Ruin is active and then we can play the Gadog Teague. Because I do believe that if we play the Gadog Teague, um, it's going to shut off a lot of cards in their hand and we're going to be way ahead to the point, and especially since being protected, that they're not going to be able to beat us. We don't have a Thalia, Guardian of Thraben, so for me, I feel like we still we need something that's going to like slow them down. And currently, we don't really have anything. I mean, we got a nice little temple boost with the Skyclave, but that's why I'm going so aggressively trying to uh, at their life total. But we don't really have anything to slow them down. So they play the Dragon's Claw, nothing threatening like I mentioned, so we're just, we draw the, the sword... I decide, you know what, let's go ahead and try to close this game as, as fast as possible. They missed a land drop. Um, maybe they play the, 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 the God card next turn. That's the only card that I could think of, or maybe a Chalice on one. I don't know what these decks really play. We have a path for any creature that they, that they play, so we pretty much have everything covered right now. Uh, the game plan is next turn, now that we have our aggro plan in place to end the game really fast, is to windmill slam down the Gadog Teague. 
um, with no protection. We're not going to have the giver to protect them, but it's okay because if they spend a turn getting rid of the Gadog Teague, then we can just win the game the following turn. So we're, we're planning, you know, a couple turns ahead here. So here they're tapping for four. There goes that cavern on dragons. And there he is. Yep, the Porporus God of, of Forge. Yeah, that's that's the card. I've seen that card in these style of decks before because um, it's, it's pretty decent. So yeah, so just like I figured, like our opponent's probably trying to do something really big. Um, and they use a lot of these. I, I, don't, I don't know what the Warren Instigator was in there for exactly. I know you can cheat in some goblin creatures, but like we haven't seen any other goblins, and the cavern has always named Dragon. I think there's is there is there a goblin that, that, that does something with dragons, or or is there something where you sack goblins to get a dragon? I feel like that's a card. I don't know, guys. Like, let me know what deck this is. Okay, I'm trying to play around things like as best as I could but again I don't really know what my opponent's playing so we play the Gadog Teague and now I'm feeling pretty good I'm like all right cool we got a two turn clock here um they could hit us with an anger of the god but even with that we still have the skyclave that we can continue dealing damage with um I mean it, it will suck don't get me wrong but um at least we won't be put like completely to nothing um, so Gadag Teague here, we're not worried about any big spells because they can't cast them. If they do cast some big creature, we can always Ghost Quarter our Forest and Path to Exile it. So we're, we have everything pretty much covered here. And we're just waiting to see what the opponent plays. And there he is, the Goblin Chain Whirler. So this card could have been uh, really good against us. But luckily with the hand that we drew, um, it's not too OP. So they're going to get rid of our Noble Hierarch here, which is fine. Uh, we have Path to Exile here, so we're going to be able to easily get rid of that Goblin Chain Whirler and win the game the following turn. I'm really interested to know what, what this deck does. The Warren Instigator is the one that throws me off the most. Everything else kind of makes sense, right? Like Chain Whirlers, like good, like mass removal kind of. Uh, Dragon Call makes sense. The God makes sense. Pillage makes a little bit of sense. But Warren Instigator, I don't know. I don't know what that card is in there for. I mean, what, the cheating a Goblin Chain Whirler? Maybe? But there it is. Path to Exile gets rid of that. Um, we're in the clear here to win the game. All they have open is a Cavern of Souls naming Dragon, so there's no worry about Lightning Bolt. Um, I guess they could have dismember, but, I mean, if they dismember, we still win. But there you have it, my friends. Um, that is another video here for you guys of Green White Taxes. Again, we play no vials, no collected companies, no gimmicks needed, just straight hate. Let me know what you guys think about the deck. Let me know in the comment section if you know what deck this is exactly that we're playing. I'm going to say it's Mono Red Prison. Or, Mon or Dragon Stompy, those are my guests. Anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, notification button, and peace out.